Baby dinosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution 2 is the most requested thing ever. But since Frontier didn't make it happen, I'll do it myself. Here are 22 of my favorite species combinations that you can pretend are parents and their offspring. The most used and my ultimate favorite being the new Moral Centripetus from the Malta DLC with the T-Rex, especially the fluffy T-Rex. The Morals are so small in comparison that they would be fresh hatchlings and I think it's just adorable. Giving the dinosaurs substitute babies makes the animals more endearing and feel more real. Yes, we have to use our imagination, but it makes for much more interesting park builds. Sticking with the T-Rex as parents, you can add Changjusaurus or Albertosaurus, if you prefer, as their teenage offspring. By matching the skins between the parent species and the juvenile species, you can really help sell the idea. But keep in mind that many animals look quite different and have different colorations when they are young as opposed to when they are fully grown, so you don't have to give them similar skins. The combination of Pentaceratops and Chasmosaurus is pretty convincing as parents and juvenile, considering that they have a similar shape to their crests, and I really like the grain orange skin patterns matched up. As the baby grows up, the crest and the limbs would elongate with the developments. At least, that's the head canon that you have to imagine. Pentaceratops and Chasmosaurus are two of my least favorite ceratopsians in Jurassic World Evolution 2, but combining them like this makes them much more interesting additions to my parks than just on their own as adults of their own species. Pachycephalosaurus and Dracorix are an obvious combination for this purpose. You can throw Stiggy Moloch into the mix as well. Pachy and Draco are two more examples of species that I'm not much of a fan of on their own, but creating a little family with these two is really fun for a park. I've used Chimerosaurus as the juvenile for Brachiosaurus in a previous exhibit speed build video, and I think they work very, very well. I recommend that if you do use any of these combinations in your own park, you don't make them part of a bigger mixed herd. I think it looks much more convincing if you only keep the parents and the offspring together, instead of adding more sauropods or any other species to a mixed herd or a mixed pack. Because, and maybe that's just me, but I think that triggers the brain more to remember, hey, these are all different species. I think that if you pair two species together in a habitat as parents and juveniles, the brain sort of wants to group them together anyway, and it sort of helps with with the illusion. If you like these ideas, please give the video a like and leave a comment down below. Which is your favorite substitute baby dinosaur? Aside from Brachy with Chimera, I have two other sauropod pairs. The first being Dreadnoughtus with the Apatosaurus. Apatosaurus just really looks like the chubby baby version of the Dreadnoughtus, and I think it's adorable. The other combination is Diplodocus with Nigerosaurus. They have similar posture, and that's more or less all there is to it. It's definitely one of those combinations that requires you to squint a bit more to make it work, but I still like the two of them together. I wish we had Baby Beta in the game, but alas, we do not. We can still give the Velociraptor some kind of offspring, though. I think with the right coloration, Troodon works pretty well. Troodon's sound effects also are already kind of baby animal-like, if that makes any sense outside of my own mind, and the big eyes are also definitely very infant-like. When I make combos as parents and offspring, I always like coming up with behavioral theories. So, like for example, let's go with the whole T-Rex was a very caring and protective parent, but maybe on the flip side, the Velociraptors would be more hostile towards their offspring, you know, more of the tough love kind of upbringing. <laughs> For the next combination, I imagine that the Compies are the really rambunctious offspring of the Coelophysis, just acting like little pests and causing trouble. Aside from the different animations, with Compy hopping all over the place, physiologically the Compy is very convincing as the baby version of the Coelophysis, I think. The standard Dimorphodon with the 22 Dimorphodon variant from the Malta expansion is another obvious choice. You can pretend that they lose their pigno fibers as they get older. The standard Aranosaurus is significantly bigger than the Camp Cretaceous Aranosaurus, so works well as the parent to that variant. 
all the more so now that we can alter the skins of the Camp Cretaceous variant. The difference in appearance I explain in my head as the fatty tissue on the back not developing until they reach adulthood and needed for energy storage for long migrations. You can imagine that a herd settles down in a certain area to birth the next generation and they stay in that area it's quite luscious they they can feed whenever they want but once they've like completely exhausted the area of all nutrition they need to migrate and at that point they need that storage to like have them survive that long migration so that's where you know the whole storytelling aspect of it comes into play another variant from the camp cretaceous dlc that works very well is pierce the kentrosaurus this time as the parent instead of the offspring, since the Camp Cretaceous variant is bigger than the standard in-game Kentro. Two combinations that I've been using for a very long time now are Ankylosaurus with Critonosaurus and Euoplocephalus with Minmi. These two combinations I think are also pretty obvious, very, very little squinting required. The only issue would be that the Minmi doesn't have a club, but I feel it's a fairly minor stretch to imagine that that develops later on in life when the animal is expected to defend itself, as opposed to still being under the protection of the parents. By the way, if you are a dinosaur fanatic and you're struggling with this make-pretend science because obviously none of it is supported by paleontological findings, maybe it helps to remind yourself that the dinosaurs in our games are not real dinosaurs, they are genetic clones. So the developmental stages they go through that alter their physical appearance from juvenile to adulthood doesn't need to be paleo accurate. It could simply be a byproduct of the genetic meddling. And speaking of genetic meddling, you can give the Indominus Rex babies in the shape of either Majungasaurus or Atrociraptor. Atrociraptor has a pretty stout head, which matches with the Indominus quite well. And we know the Indominus is part raptor. So perhaps that explains why its offspring looks very raptor-esque. The Majungasaurus looks quite good as well. Obviously the muzzle is shorter and has that really characteristic abelosaurid appearance to it. But the Majunga also has that bit of a grizzly look that fits quite well with the, with the Indominus Rex. It's mostly the arms that don't match, and for that reason I think the Atrociraptors work slightly better as the baby Indominus Rex. Because they are smaller, it would also mean they are younger, and therefore it's more easy to explain away the difference between the adult and the offspring since they still have a lot of growing up to do. Two combinations for adolescent offspring would be Struthiomimus for the Gallimimus and Proceratosaurus for the Monolophosaurus. The Procerato and Struthi are really not much smaller than Monolophosaurus and Gallimimus. It's definitely not the big size difference like Moros with T-Rex, but you could pass it off as them being nearly full grown. Not every offspring in your park is still a baby. These would already be quite grown. They would be from a different season or maybe even a different year. The same goes for Taurosaurus. It's not that much smaller than Triceratops, but I think it does look younger and cuter than the more wrinkly and tired looking Triceratops. And that makes them good adolescent juveniles. I really feel like Triceratops looks like the exhausted parent who has not been getting enough sleep. Like they've been laying awake all night waiting for the Taurosaurus to come home. It's been out partying all night. It didn't call to let them know they were safe. And you know, they sneak in at six in the morning. This is one of my least favorites of the ones I'm showing you, but I am still showing you Stegosaurus as the parent of Werehosaurus. Another combination that requires a lot of squinting and imagination is Herrerasaurus being born to Allosaurus. Now Herrerasaurus actually makes a really good juvenile for many of the big theropods in the game, like Acrocanthosaurus and especially the T-Rex. I've been using Herrera as a baby T-Rex since the first Jurassic World Evolution, but since the video already started with two T-Rex examples, I wanted to show something else. So I put Herrera with Allosaurus here, and you could pretend that the brow bones and the spikes don't develop until a later age. And really, with that kind of mindset, if you are comfortable stretching your imagination like that, Herrerasaurus could pretty much work for any theropod. I think I've saved one of the better ones for last, a Giga with the Australovenator. The 2022 Giga I much prefer to the default Giga, so I don't see myself using that one much anymore. <laughs> but I do think it's a great fit with the Australovenator. And in this case, you could pretend that both 
aren't the species that they actually are. Not just the baby is something else, but the adult as well. The default Giga has become a fan favorite stand-in for Mapusaurus, and the Australovenator could be the baby variant of that species. Of course, it's not a perfect physiological match, far from it. The same goes for all of the animals on this list, but I think you can make it work. And honestly, I always say that to get the most out of Jurassic World Evolution 2, you have to use your imagination. You're doing yourself a disservice if you don't. Because let's be honest, not just in the way of baby dinosaurs, but in many ways the game is limited. But you unlock so much potential with just like a little game of pretend. I hope this video has inspired you for some fun enclosure ideas with parents and baby dinosaurs. Let me know your favorites in a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game.